What's up guys? I'm Nick and this is Build Dad Build. A place where we feel if you're loaded like a freight train, flying like an aeroplane, and feeling like a space brain, maybe you should call an Uber. Alright guys, on this episode we're gonna make a table with an epoxy inlay that kind of curves back and forth organically out of two by material. It's a river tape. Hey guys, I'm sorry about the noise. Apparently it's very important to uh, drain the fire hydrant right outside my garage right now for like an hour. After I made the epoxy sofa table, which I will link to right here, um, I got an idea to make one for our hallway in here. Let me show you. All right, here we go. All right, come in here. Hey, look, there's a sign I made. And we're looking at, ooh, it's really ugly light. Look at this area right here. There's just, it's vacant. There's nothing there. So I'm thinking like a nice little, nice little, hallway table right about here about three and a half foot long so i've got two two by tens over here i'm going to be cutting them down about three and a half feet a little bit longer because we're going to take the ends off after we pour the epoxy and then we're going to carve the center of these two to kind of form a channel to pour the epoxy in so when you're doing something like this you guys want to look for the areas with the most interest in there so i'm definitely looking at this knot up here um, I've got a little kind of chip out knot right here, as well as this guy, there's one right there. And then I'm also looking at the grain powdering in between those. Should be kind of cool. Okay, so that penetrating epoxy's had about a day to set. I have everything clamped in here. Uh, I have my little stop block dealies. Here, let me turn around. I've got both sides clamped in. I've got these little blocks with Tyvek tape on them to mitigate anything that may get up on them. The scariest thing is I'm kind of flying without a net here. This thing is too long to put in the tub that I normally use. And so if this thing starts leaking, I mean, it's just straight onto the tarp, which is on my carpet in my house. I've double tie vac I've siliconed 
everything I could possibly can think of. If y'all want to see the insane way that I put a mold together, uh, leave a comment down below and I can show you, but it's probably way overkill. Now the moment of truth, we're going to mix up some epoxy, pour it in, and we hope that it doesn't leak. Let's cook this chicken. <laughs> What's up guys? So our tabletop is pretty much done. Now we need to work on the legs. Legs are gonna be kind of relative dimension depending on how you carved and whatnot. I do have an issue. Build these holes up here, not thinking about running the, a, a board, a support board across the back of this. I do wanna put some LEDs behind this and I'm trying to figure out the best way to still illuminate these. I think what I might end up doing is running the back support in between these two and then maybe drilling a hole and running some LEDs along the back as well to make these light up. But we'll play with that in a minute. Once you've got your tabletop done, you're basically going to do relative dimensions off of this. And most of those console tables, like I was looking like an average size for them is 30 inches, but that seems really short to me. So I want to make this about 36 inches tall. I want all the leg structure to be the same size uh, and I want it to be square stock. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna raise my blade tall enough to know I, that I can cut through a two by, cause I've just got a ton of two by material laying around. So I figure I'll cut it down into one and a half by one and a half inch stock. And the easiest way to make sure that you're gonna have square stock is to put this, line this up against your blade and then move your fence against it. So you're gonna take that dimension, you're gonna lock it in. And then when I run this through the other way, it's going to be the same on both sides. <laughs> Kids, this is what happens when you forget to cut your uh, bibs to length first. Whoops! <laughs> Sat another. I was like, something didn't look right. So, back to the saw.
What's up, cupcakes? Guys, if you still aren't familiar with the Cupcake Army, you're not following my Instagram stories. Go do it now. You won't be disappointed. All right, how we doing? All right, so there wasn't a whole lot of hiccups along the way. The main stuff is as follows. I miscalculated the amount of epoxy I needed in those first couple of pours, which actually ended up being like kind of a, like a blessing in disguise, I guess, because I ran out of epoxy. So I ended up having to order some more from Total Boat. Their shipping is so on the ball. But since I was short that little amount, I didn't want to try to mix another color in, so I went clear. And I think that clear over the top really kind of helped uh, give it a little bit more depth. So I think that actually worked in my favor. The only other two things that I would mention is one, uh, plot out where your power supply and stuff is gonna be for your LEDs, if you're gonna put LEDs on there. Two issues when it came to the LEDs. One was those holes I drilled, uh, when I poured epoxy in them, they were just too opaque to uh, let any light through, so I ended up not trying to light those up at all. And I'd originally planned to put a power strip underneath the table so I would have like extra outlets in case, in case somebody's here and they want to charge their phone or something, they could just park it over there and it'd be out of the way. I didn't take into consideration the size of the power strip when I designed the bottom of the table and I, there was nowhere I could fit it. So I ended up just scrapping the whole idea of putting a power strip on there and just plugged the table directly into the wall. That being said, I think it looks amazing. I do have an issue, and if any of you guys work with a lot of epoxy, let me know. This is the second time that I've done a pink pour, where when I've poured the epoxy, it has looked like a very rich, hot pink. But as it cures, it kind of takes on this like more orangey, translucent color. I don't know if I'm just not using the right pigment or what, but like a really for my daughter's room, I wanted to have like a really hot pink lamp for her and the thing turned out orange. So I don't know if it's a pigment issue or if I'm doing something weird, I don't know. Uh, but if you do know, let me know in the comments down below. Also guys, if you haven't already, stop by my Discord server. There's a lot of good conversations going on over there. There's a lot of people helping each other out. Speaking of people that help me out, I just wanna say thanks to all these guys right here, my Patreon supporters. Guys, without your help, I don't know what I'd do. Here's a cheers to you. Here's a cheers to all you guys, actually. Clinkies. Chin chin. Chinny chin. Buck buck. And a special shout out goes to our newest top tier patron, The Weekend DIYer. Thanks, brother. And as always, a special thanks goes to, I, I have to write them down now because there's too many of them for me to remember now. Nick the Greek, Stephen Mann, Easy E, Derek Coates, Caveman Ross, and Charles Faulkner. Thanks guys, you guys are absolutely awesome. And guys, I think that's all I got for today. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe. If you have subscribed, get your mother to subscribe. Mothers love me. Don't do that. And until next time, thanks for playing. And now I gotta get to work. <laughs>